Okay, one thirty. I'll start this meeting for the committee of the Northampton Senior Center. Public session. Seeing no one. Approval of the minutes of the December 11th meeting. Your motion is accepted. I'll make a motion. Well, I'll second. Second. Any discussion? Any deletions or corrections? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? They are accepted. <coughs> Staff restart. Report. Michelle's here. Hi, Michelle Donovan, social worker. Okay, now, with my camera. <laughs> I'm going to start off with saying um, everyone already knows that our companion program was not um, funded again this fiscal year, but I wanted to share with everyone that some volunteers are continuing um, with their companions um, regardless of that they're still not receiving a stipend. Some are able to continue visiting people, which is great, and others just are not for financial reasons. But we've always had people that are volunteering um, that don't even put in their hours. I'd have to call them up. <laughs> so we still have those those people on some of the other companion programs. And so it's still it's still happening on its own a little, not as much as we would like. But um, so that that's good news. Um, fuel assistance so far. Um, I signed up um, about 30 families. Mm -hmm. And I have referred many others um, under 60 to community action to sign up. I've gotten a lot, a lot of calls this year for mm -hmm. that. Um, and of course, budget cuts there. We will not be receiving as much this year as they did last year. But um, we always just make sure that they know that they should still keep paying their bill throughout the year. Um, it does not cover a whole winter's bill. It is just, just a little help. Um, along the way, and they will not get that um, credit for a few months after they after they apply, because um, Community Action runs that program on two women that do all the okay uh, approval of the applications. So it takes quite a long time. Um, Shine program is very busy as usual. We, we ended um, December 7th for the open enrollment for to be able to change your Medicare prescription or Advantage plan if you'd like. Um, we added um, quite a few extra days to that. And um, so we were very busy and we, we also re referred other people, of course, that were not from Northampton um, to other shiny counselors within the area. And we have lost two of our shine counselors here, but have gained a new one. So, <laughs> um, Connie Radcliffe retired as of January 1st, so she will not be coming um, any longer. And Carol Katz, she was actually a new shine counselor from last year, um, has gone over to Highland Valley to be the shine counselor. So I'm very happy for that. Um, she means she's happy that. Highland yes, Valley. yes, yes. I, I was going to finish, I was going to finish. <laughs> that, because they have a lot of people that need um, shine counseling and signing up for home care services and mass health. So now she's over there once a week um, assisting with that. So um, they don't come here. <laughs> they, will, they, they will not be on um, as many referrals to us as before. Of course, we all help each other out regardless anyway. But it will be nice for um, them to have someone on site that is able to do that sort of thing. So that's wonderful. Um, we have gotten a, a new man. Um, his name is John. I'm sorry, I don't have his last name with me. Very nice man. Um, and he's going to be um, doing the shine counseling the extra day here. And it's switched from Friday to Thursday afternoons because that's when he's available to volunteer. Um, so he's here today, and that's been working out very well. And um, I, of course, take chime appointments throughout the week also. So we're very busy with that. Um, low Vision Group, uh, I want to just update, because we don't have the van, the transportation right now. Um, they're doing remarkably well taking the van, the PVTA van, most of them. 
Um, it, it's been a little struggle, um, but um, they are, they've been a, a few months now, three or four months now, and, they, and most of them are doing pretty well with it. Um, they're going to be reimbursed for their transportation through um, the, um, the MAB, Massachusetts um, Association for the Blind. So I am working with um, uh, Lori Worley um, to figure out how we are going to um, get them reimbursed. Um, I believe that um, we're going to have them send money to the PVTA to pay for tickets. And then when they come to the group once a month, then we will give them the tickets to be able to come back and forth for, for each um, group. So that will work out very well. And um, we continue to do the dinners from next door um, for the low vision group. We have lunch, we order lunch through Highland Valley um, lunch program. And then I go over and get it and we do it like family style. And they really like that. So it's a hot meal, at least for that one time that they're here. Um, and just other things that I've been working on, workshops that are coming up. Um, Patty and I talked about putting um, workshops on a more regular basis. Um, you heard it here that we used to do. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, um, we're still working on that. Um, so we'll have more of a set date so people will be able to plan things a little bit better. Uh, I have anyone have questions? Any questions for Michelle? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. 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 Um, everyone has a copy of the um, PS and OM accounts, our city appropriation. Um, we still have funding, of course, for not even halfway through the year. So, um, you know, we have money in there. And as redundant as it is for me to say this, when it's May, we start transferring funds from our revolving accounts that we either have done through fundraising or donations from grants um, to pay the city what we owe um, because it's our budget's based on all of those um, other accounts and our city appropriation. So then that usually you'll hear more definite things come um, May when I just start looking at uh, transferring a lot of the funds. Um, well, that's, that's what we have. Do we have any questions on the 1915, 2015. Okay, we'll move on to the director's report, Patty. So first, Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> Other than Teresa, I'm sure it's been a good year so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Teresa fell on her way in there. Oh, so, oh no, I almost no, fell. I oh. fell at home about a month ago. Oh. Down my steps. You know, oh. The day that ice was everywhere, well, yeah. I didn't know it was everywhere. I thought it was rain. <laughs> So this was uh, Teresa's first day out. Oh. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so welcome. Opening day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Opening day. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Helen Roman Walters, who is um, the staff person doing medical transportation, also oversees um, components of the fitness center, is going to be leaving. Um, her last day is on um, the 20, 22nd. And um, she's leaving for a position um, at the high school, it's something that she's been trying to um, get into the schools to um, be in, in um, working there. We, um, it's a 19 and a half hour position, and right now I'm reworking the job description, so I'll be working with human resources. Um, Helen had a, a, a dual set of abilities um, with the fitness center and then doing medical transportation. It's pretty easy to fill in a person with the medical transportation part, having good customer skills and um, 
having the ability to be organized and get trips planned and it's a lot of back and forth um, and a good telephone presence. The fitness is a different aspect of it because you do have to have some medical um, knowledge to make sure that when we get the forms back. So that's going to be a harder part. I'm, I'm looking at how that job can either be switched a little bit and, um, I, you know, there may be another person out there who can do the exact same thing, um, you know, to have those skill sets. So we'll, we'll see that. And the mayor did sign off on that, um, allowing that position to be um, refilled. So that's good. Um, the annual appeal envelopes, which we've been doing, um, I think, no, I think from since 2003. Um, anyway, the um, envelopes will be going in the city street listing, also known as the city census. You know, we rely on that because that's uh, for us a, a major fundraising um, opportunity. Um, in 2014. Um, it was a little over $4,800 that we made. And each year it has really declined somewhat. Um, and I think you can look at what the economy is. And you know, we're probably one of many, many um, organizations that people have the ability or opportunity to contribute to. So um, we'll be doing it because it is a great way for us to get um, our name out there uh, so that people are interested in contributing. And it isn't just seniors who, who uh, receive the annual census, it's anybody who lives in Northampton receives the city census. So it's a whole range of individuals and ages that uh, contribute to the annual census. I'm sorry, the annual appeal in the census. So that's good. Um, uh, we're getting ready for the Just Because sale, which happens tomorrow and Saturday. Um, both days it's 9 to 1. and. Um, so if anybody's interested in signing up, we could still use volunteers. It's interesting, fun, and it brings a lot of people in the building. And of course, the net um, result is that we um, bring in money, but even a bigger net result is that we get stuff out of the, out out of the building. <laughs> uh, we had first night here. Um, I think this was our third year, if not our fourth. Um, our building was open for first night from 1 o'clock to 6 p.m. And um, there were over 500 people in this building um, for first night with wow. all the performances. It's probably the first year that we've had so many people in the building because they had um, different types of venues in this year than in previous years. So it really brought a lot of people in. Um, and so uh, the building, there's a building monitor and a custodian in the building for first night. And um, we, we are reimbursed for the building monitors by the first night committee. But um, the recommendation from this year's monitor, because there were so many people in the building, is to really have two monitors um, in the building. So as it gets closer to first night next year, because I'm sure that they'll want to have a venue here, because it worked out really well, mm -hmm. um, is to look at um, perhaps having two building monitors. I was present at all of the, all of the activity that was here. And it was very well attended. I was really surprised. Yeah. The last uh, show that they had, people were standing. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, mm -hmm. drummers. But yeah. I thought it was well taken care of. Mm -hmm. and I mean, uh, were the volunteers that you had pretty good in terms of? Because I know having volunteered for a first night, uh, were there yeah. volunteers? Yeah, the, the two volunteers are regular participants Great. here. Who, oh, good. Who were volunteers for first night? The first year that they were here, they didn't have anyone, and it, it made our building monitor, and I was here for a while, that you really were kind of doing a lot of answering questions, mm -hmm. and you know, we didn't have buttons, or, you know, it just was very right. complicated, because we're letting them use, the city's letting them use right. the building, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sometimes when that happens, People assume it's your responsibility, you know, why aren't there buttons or how come it was yeah. listed this yeah. way. And yeah. um, so then it was asking to make sure that they had somebody down here as um, sort of their monitors right. for first sure, night. Site manager and yeah. 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 So, or so it, this year it worked out okay. and I'm sure because the two people who are here knew about the senior That's center great. and you know were able to let people know other things Good. besides That's where great. the buttons were and other venues. Very well attended. Mm -hmm. All four shows. That's good. 
in the last show they were standing up and well, I hope there weren't more than 211 people in the <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you count, Casey? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just enjoyed it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's nice having first night activities here. Um, a lot of my time has been being spent working on the senior and veteran tax work off program, um, interviewing participants and making contacts with departments, and then with the participant and making matches. And, um, it's just, it's a lot of, a lot of discussions and conversations. Um, so let me just review, uh, there's 18 seniors and four veterans. Um, we have two people at Jackson Street School, two at um, Senior Services here, um, two at Fire Rescue, uh, two at Forbes Library, one at the Board of Health, one at Central Services, one at Parks and Recreation, one at the high school, two at Jackson Street School, one at Human Resources, one at Northampton Student Services, one at Bridge Street, and one at Ryman Road. And there's still a few more people that have to get placed. Um, so, uh, you know, it's quite varied as to where people will be in the program. How are the various departments uh, taking these people in? I mean, how are they working with them? Are there any problems? Or? Yeah, there's been some issues along the way. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's personalities yeah. and mm -hmm. work ethics and, and <laughs> misunderstandings and, right. and things. But overall, the program is, has been very successful. Okay. Did, once you find people, then the department at which they're volunteering or, or working their, their, their time, they're responsible for supervising and et cetera. Yeah, right. The department, it, the, the person has to work on site. They can't right. do something somewhere else and yep. count it for um, mm -hmm. time. Gotcha. Um, so there has to be a supervisor. It could be one or two different people, mm -hmm. but somebody who's really keeping um, track and of their hours, yeah. um, making sure the person knows what mm -hmm. they're supposed to be doing and to help them in any way mm -hmm. um, if there's questions and mm -hmm. whatnot. So, um, but there's been great positive comments by uh, a number of the departments um, and it, it, whatever issues there have been uh, very very small but for the first year meaning from July to November of 2014 it, it was a very successful program so it's a you know the mayor put that together in terms of an idea through his inaugural speech and it's um, it's a beneficial program to the departments and it's a beneficial program to the participants mm -hmm. who are pleased to be able to have some money going or a credit towards their taxes. Um, I've been in some conversations with the Jewish Family Services. Um, they run a caregiver support group and it's been being held up at the synagogue and they are going to they are looking for another location and would like to collaborate with us. So um, that is probably something that will be happening here uh, one, one time a week, I believe it is. But we have, like, uh, January 20th a meeting to discuss the specifics. But, you know, caregiver support groups are, you know, a wonderful asset to any, any facility. And we did have a caregiver support group at one time, and we had quite a few people, and then it just kind of dwindled out. So... Um, this this one at the synagogue has been happening for I think three years so there's a good following and you know once you have something established people are more apt to join because they see it as being a continuous um, support for them okay and then it's going to be time for the 13th annual health and safety fair <laughs> which actually is a wonderful event it just brings so many vendors together last year we had about 67 vendors um, so we're looking forward to it i haven't set a date yet but it will be in may it's just trying to figure out between other uh, programs in the building and rentals um, what date we can have it but you know that that's uh, one day is when all the vendors are here and people come in the building and you know we do have hundreds of people coming into the health and safety fair but it's like the day before setting up all the tables and you know clearing furniture you know one of those repetitious things that we we do so um, but it the health and safety fair at our 13th annual annual which is you know going to be bigger and better than 
mm -hmm. all the other 12. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be hearing more about that. And that's what I have for a report. Um, I will say there's, um, when we do update on grants, I'll be talking about a couple of them, but also I'm gonna have Crystal speak to um, a grant that's been received um, for benefits counseling. So I'll have her speak to that uh, when we get to that item. Okay, any questions for Patty on her director's report? And then we'll move on. Buildings and grounds, Patty? Um, uh, two items. Uh, one with the snowstorm, the ice storm we had, and then this past storm. Um, I'm trying to work my way through who's supposed to be doing what I think because I think I have it figured out and then um, <laughs> because we have different departments doing different things and so it's really trying to figure out who who really is doing what part of it like who does the sanding who does the plowing who does the snow <coughs> removal and then we have the housing authority that we work in because we share that back parking lot and according to the lease the housing authority plows McDonald way but they they aren't uh, god I gotta remember the lease they don't stand back there so uh, I just got to make sure the right people are doing the right thing so I have a meeting with the mayor on, on Tuesday so this will be one of my agenda items is so we can really get clarification because it seems every year there's a little obscurity about who does what mm -hmm. and I mean in the end it gets done <coughs> But, you know, I would hope that we could have a concise listing of who does what. And, you know, it's a big city and, you know, everybody, UW, Central Service, everybody has a lot to do whenever it snows. But I have a concern because we open at 815 and um, people need to feel safe getting in the building. Mm -hmm. You know, since you put your feet on the ground, you have to watch out because it could be very, very icy, especially if there's snow on top of it. Um, and the other thing is um, we've been having um, some uh, problems with our heating system and as of today they think they might have it resolved. Um, I actually on Tuesday sent people home quickly. Um, it was a little after four um, because the it sounded like we had an oil rig going in the building. <laughs> and, um, the pressure was building up and um, they resolved it really as of today um, they're hoping that they resolved it as of today so um, mm -hmm. the building's been warm and, and hopefully it really is going to be um, how it should be for our AC and, and heating system so it's a very very complex system mm -hmm. um, yes it's very complex <laughs> if, if some of you have never been in the basement I invite you to come down to the basement just to see all the mechanicals for the um, wells and it's just very complicated, and I'm glad I, I'm not the person who has to understand it all. So. Sounds like. And yeah, that's all I have about buildings and grounds to report. Um, I will just say too about investigating um, a sign. I think Bob Montague, you brought up about a sign in the back, mm -hmm. and then also um, one in the front that's more visible than what's up there. So we're working on that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, any questions on the buildings and grounds? That's good to hear. Okay, we'll move on to old business. Update on the kick the tires ban campaign. Yeah, well that's going. Um, I will say that I believe uh, there there's a difference between what was put in our last insert for the amount raised versus what our uh, Excel spreadsheet, I think there was an error on the part of me putting it in the paper that there it was should have been a 17, not a 19. That's not on you, Joanne, that's on me. Um, so we, ha we didn't raise as much as we thought. Although I will say too that, um, you know, people are still considering donating and so we hope that it just continues mm -hmm. and every paper we put um, additional information in about so it's about 17,322.70 that we have 
which isn't bad. What's so, the price of the bandwidth to be in the IDS? Um, as of a price last um, October, uh, about 65000 65. Yeah, yeah. And, and it has a wheelchair or lift in it, so that's one of the um, major costs. Yeah. Um, you may have seen in the paper East Hampton uh, Enrichment Center um, just recently purchased a van. Their um, friends group purchased it for them through donations from banks and other mm -hmm. individuals. So that makes three for East Hampton? I think they have two. I think they had three and now they have, they have two. Or one was a, I don't know, the, the, they have two. I guess the bottom line. I did notice in the picture in the paper of the band that it said East Hampton Savings Bank on it, but we can't do that, can no. we? Well, Is not if it's a city vehicle. That it was purchased through the Friends Group. And put anything they want on it. Um, I mean, there's I guess I know East Hampton Savings Bank gave them quite a bit. Yeah. To yeah. Um, yeah. So we purchased one through, say, a division. We could actually have advertising on it if somebody needed it. Well, I, I, well, I that's know, a, because if that's you turn a good, the city, and the city owns it. Right. There's a complication here. Yeah. Because who pays the insurance? Yeah. Right. I mean, if yeah. Elder Vision Inc. did all of it, then, you all it, yeah, then you could do but it then quickly. how is it for East Hampton? Then who pays for the van and shit? I don't know. Well, I, I, mean, that I knew that the this was a the problem. Money, but who owns it? Uh, who's got the title? Right. Who's the fast in it and the liability of it? So yeah. that that part I don't yeah. know, but yes, I noticed that to East Hampton Savings was on it. So. They could put that in the city of Northampton owner. Or something. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not. The advertising is, is out when they own it. It's, it's the owner. It doesn't mean anything. Ridiculous. So, yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress. And um, with the capital improvements, I'm not really sure when I hear back, um, but it would it's for the fiscal year, so it would be 16, so it would be until. July that there'd be any money, so we're just going to have to hold out, and I and I hope we do get funding from the capital improvement. Um, and I did report already to you that we can't receive um, CPA funds because we can't buy vans with our vehicles. Yeah, with yeah money. we can build apartments, but not vans. So, that's kick the tires. <laughs> Questions in the van. Okay, we'll move on to the discussion of the board chairman and vice chairman. I just want to announce this time I'm stepping down as chair of this board. I enjoyed it very much. And, uh, I'm and because Bob is the vice chair and in the bylaws it says the vice chair will fill in until there is the next election, which is when well, June or? Yeah, I think it is the bylaws that uh, year. July. Is it June or July? I, I, I don't have the bylaws with you, yeah. but it's it's mm -hmm. sometime then. Yeah. Oh, you have it right there. Yeah. Mm. Are you stepping down from the board completely? No. Oh, okay. No. Just, um, yeah. Chair. Well, I would like to make a motion that we uh, accept his resignation and also thank Mike for his uh, many years of service yeah. as chairman. Uh, I don't know how many years exactly, but there was a side here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we should thank him for that. Yes. And, uh, can, I, can I make a suggestion on that motion? Yes. That you make two different motions, please. One motion to accept the resignation, the other motion that uh, we give Mike our heartfelt thanks for all his years of effort and time and putting up with us. That's me right. Okay, so. <laughs> so we'll go on your first one. Do I'll I have second. a second? Okay, but, uh, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any further discussion? It's been accepted, I guess. So, but uh, we'll make your second motion. 
Okay, the second motion would be to thank Mike Ahern for his mm -hmm. many years of service as chairman mm -hmm. and years of service as on the board, mm -hmm. which he will be continuing with. Yeah, yeah. But his service as the chairman, we want to thank him for all, mm -hmm. all that he's done. Thank you. Mike, when's that effective? When Effective yeah, immediately after or after, after this meeting? After this meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah next time you look, I'll be sitting there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, sorry about big, that. The big chair. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if I'm going to need a vote on this, but I'm, I'm stepping down as chair and I'm willing to be a candidate for a vice chair. You know? well, I think we're going to need the uh, nomination for uh, the uh, now empty office of vice chair. And I'd like to nominate Mike Ahern for that Second. position. Second. She's like, Second. 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 Uh, any discussion on it further? Any other nomination? Is it what you want? <laughs> like I said, I'm resigning the chair and uh, until the vote comes in June, I guess. It's what you want, though. But you're very you're you're happy if you're the vice chair. You're you're willing to do that. Well, like to do okay. okay. Yeah. I was waiting for you would be elected to be Yeah. Happy. Yeah. 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 That, <laughs> I wouldn't want to force you in, but that's what I would do. Okay. Uh, somebody wants to make a motion on that. Well, I, I made a motion we to nominate uh, yeah. Michael. I'll second it. Well, second it, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. Abstaining? None. Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, Thanks, no problem. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell him he was my backup. He said, well, he was my vice chair as a backup in case I get down to the back somewhere. <laughs> so yes, I get double cups of coffee now. Yeah. Two cups of coffee. Don't go with No, no. Sorry, we'll move. Troublemaker. Oh, the yeah. update on grants. Yep. Okay. Um, so just as a review, um, we received from Highland Valley Elder Services um, two grants um, out of, I think, the four that we applied for. One was for LGBT, um, 3700 and then medical transportation, we received um, 1200 I mean, not that we physically have it, but that we can, we were uh, approved for it, and so we'll submit invoices um, as we need to or submit our um, request for uh, payment. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're working with those. Uh, soon the formula grant from Department of Elder Affairs um, will be applying for that, and that's based on the dollar amount that's set by the legislature. Right now it's $8 per senior. So um, that's how we end up with that total amount. We still have to apply for it, even though every um, city and town can apply for it and expect to get something. Um, so you know that help. That's a big part of our budget. That's over forty thousand dollars. So hopefully the dollar amount for seniors um, doesn't change. Um, and that number of seniors that we have is based on a federal census. So it was based on the two thousand ten federal census. Um, at one point when I first started, the federal census for Northampton for seniors went down and so did the dollar amount. So we got hit twice um, with that formula grant. Um, if anything is happening in Northampton, more seniors are moving into the city because one, you have the assisted living up at Linda Manor and you're going to have the assisted living up at um, I want to say Indian Hill. I'll get the state hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it called? Hospital Hill. No, what's it? They changed the name. Yeah, so it's called Hospital Hill. Village Hill. Village Hill. Village Hill. Thank Hill. you, yeah. Mary. Yeah. I'm surprised today. So up at Village Hill, there's also another assisted living that's going to be um, built. Um, you know, we did have Northampton Nursing Home close, um, Florence Rest Home close, uh, but that isn't going to be enough to um, counterbalance. Um, all of the seniors coming in, not just in assisted living, but also within other uh, units within the city. So I think we'll do okay with the, the number of uh, seniors still, because it's the place to move to. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, that's all the formula grant. Um, and then uh, recently we, we were awarded um, a three-year grant for um, benefits counseling. Crystal is the one who was very excited about applying for the grant. It's a very exciting program because it's a regional type program um, for our service area. And um, you probably hear a lot about regionalization and everybody seems to like that. So uh, it's something that we now have our foot in the door to do. What who's the grant through? Massachusetts Councils on Aging. Oh, okay. Yeah. And their funding came from the Department of Elder Affairs. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, I'll let Crystal talk about the specifics. I did have a meeting with the mayor today um, because one of the there's going to be a um, a manager for this program um, who will be hired. So um, that's all coming out of the grant funding. But Crystal did an extremely Beautiful job on this this grant, and we it's, it was a competitive grant, and we we um, were able to be awarded the grant. So it's pretty exciting. Work, Crystal. So um, we were the grant categories um, were for a building a new benefit counseling and application assistance program. Um, so basically, it's similar to the Shine program. Um, instead of providing assistance to people who are looking to apply for Medicaid and Medicare help, um, it's volunteer assistance with public benefit applications. So circuit breaker tax credits, fuel assistance, SNAP benefits. So we're gonna um, be creating a training manual, um, a part-time position for a um, regional coordinator for the volunteers um, will be hired that at 19.5 hours a week. Um, the total amount that we were awarded is $90,000. So that's and it starts January 10th. So I'm um, obviously the person isn't hired yet. So I'm taking the leadership role as far as um, the program implementation. <laughs> um, I'll be recruiting the volunteers regionally um, until we can get that person hired. I'm hoping to have the person hired by the 15th of February. So you have the benefits for people under 62? No, seniors only. Yep, it's for seniors 16 and older. So we'll be coordinating um, with a lot of senior centers in the service area. And our service area is the Highland Valley Elder Services okay. catchment area. Oh. So we have 15 communities that we will be servicing. Wow. Oh. So how do you, um, is there a relationship with Highland Valley? Yes. Overlap. Yeah, we have a relationship oh, with Highland yeah. Valley from a referral purpose. Okay. We've well. received numerous referrals yeah. from Highland Valley okay. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So we believe those referrals probably will multiply exponentially, but that's okay because that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. So they, they'll refer people to us, and you know, it might, somebody may be getting these um, applications and information within a senior center. Um, versus when some of the volunteers go to the homes as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a oh, great so outreach program. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm right. hoping to have um, do volunteer recruitment through the local colleges as well um, so that you know we'll have people who are majoring in social work and human services that will also be volunteers for the program as well as mm -hmm. community volunteers from the individual communities that are being served. In, in Franklin County Home Care has a program already so they will be our mentors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so it's exciting and um, the other um, agency that was awarded the grant services Berkshire County it's Berkshire County Elder Services uh, or Elder Services of Berkshire County so it's kind of amazing that um, we were awarded for this area then Berkshire County was awarded and then Franklin County already has a program so Western Mass is taking over get all the help I need if I come to Western Mass. <laughs> <laughs> just get past Worcester. Yeah. Yeah. That's Western Mass, isn't it? Worcester, isn't it? Worcester. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. No, yeah. I, uh, no, I'm kidding because that's what they all say. But Western Mass, that's Worcester, right? <laughs> yeah, the reason that um, MCOA applied, Mass Councils on Aging applied for grant money from um, service incentive grants from the Office of Elder Affairs because um, after doing 
a report there was it was reported that 63 percent of elder only households in massachusetts are economically insecure as of 2013. Yeah. older adults are defined as economically insecure when they do not have sufficient income to meet their basic uh, needs and necessary household expenses so that's why this program is so important yeah. Yeah. So and sometimes when you're talking with a senior and their issue or concern or need might be about housing but then you can also talk to them about fuel assistance or you know nutrition programs yeah. and kind of get them bundled into um, mm -hmm. uh, different programs so this is a great way mm -hmm. to coordinate. sort of, yeah coordinate that program and I think the really exciting part too is that um, people can get a visit at their home because um, we do have a lot of in our area and I'm sure all over the country people who are pretty isolated and um, yep. help out mm -hmm. and we don't have transportation. Yeah, if someone needs housing problems, they also have all the other problems. If your income is low, you have problems across the board. Yeah. Right. Nutrition, housing, everything. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, elderly shutoff protection. They're not aware of arrearage management programs with the utility companies. Um, so these are all things I actually developed, which I can give you guys a copy of if you want. I developed something called a public benefit screen, um, and I developed it for this grant in, right, no. <laughs> um, in order to be able to help um, we can send the laptop. Yeah, we can send the laptop. Yeah, that's right. And um, so that way, when you go to somebody's house to do one of these appointments, you're screening them for everything that they possibly qualify for. And you're, a lot of these applications require the same documentation. So through the grant, I've applied for um, mobile scanners, um, Wi-Fi, USBs with a contract for Verizon. Um, I've applied for laptops. So when you go into somebody's house, you can make all of the copies of their 1099s, their tax documents, not tax documents, do everything in like a one-shot visit. Um, and then when there is follow-up, um, it's follow-up regarding those letters that come in that nobody understands because they're in a oh. foreign language and things like that. So, you know, these are you know, all things that we have experienced here and we were able to demonstrate that experience in our grant application, you know, which qualified us. Well, to get technology it, so. these days is good to use. Yeah. It. yeah. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. we're excited. Yeah. It's something that's very exciting that we get to try. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we, May I we, see one of your copies? Yeah. And we've been yeah. talking about who we can bring in from different agencies mm -hmm. and programs to talk about the part of the training yeah. uh, for, the, for what what's out there for yeah. public benefits. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, so it will be a, you know, a coordinated event when we have the trainings through. We'll have utility companies come in that can talk about the arrearage management, the extra help that they may offer through the individual utility companies, as well as the SNAP and Social Security. And you know, so the volunteers will receive extensive training as well as ongoing support from both the manager and myself. Thank you, Chris. That really covers the That's a good job. That's a very good job. Anyone have anything under old business I can talk about? There we go. We'll move on to new business. Okay. You have any? Anyone have anything for uh, I'd like to make sure that everybody here knows that the photography club from the senior center and my photography class has almost 80 pictures being displayed at Forbes Library right now. Oh, yeah. We were real excited about that. That's we saw great. Almost 100. We, they kicked out two out of the 150 we put in, and that's amazing. How long is it on display, Jim? Till the end of the month. Are you quite right and we are getting all kinds. I get calls every day. Where do I get to come to this class? So it's going to be exciting. Yeah, for me. We'll have to put you in the great room. <laughs> yeah. uh, we may, it, it, I'm going to have to do some pretty hard figuring that yeah. we're going to run this because if I get 20% of the calls, I'll have 30 people in class. Yeah. Wow. So it's done, yeah. it went over the top, excited, so everybody's doing real well. Um, the um, Constry Chronicle will come out the end of January, 
be. So people, we could put something in that um, as a feature so that they can get up, even if they had like two days to get up there, they would at least know about it. Is it it's part of our tonight out too, right? Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people. Are you able to write a little article? That I we can, can do that, yeah. I, put yeah, up, I, get, can, I get it to her tomorrow. Okay, that'd be great Maybe, if you can uh, put it in. Stay. By Monday, how's that? That's fine. Yeah. And Jim's photography class is also doing a photo display, a photography display here at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. And um, one of his students is doing an independent um, photography exhibit for February, Liz Hamilton. So we, I definitely been recruiting these students <laughs> as artists for the senior center which has made my job a little bit easier usually when I contact artists there I have to contact them like a year in advance and then I contact them a month ahead of time and they're like oh I double booked myself and gym students are so eager to you know they have beautiful work and they're very eager to get it out um, I actually had people that I was like trying to juggle around so that I could fit more to the students and it was pretty amazing the, uh, how talented they are. I'm pretty proud of them because yeah. they they entered eight contests mm -hmm. last year, and out of the eight contests they entered, we won six firsts in two seconds. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's great. So, nice. Oh, baby, be proud of them. I'm smelling a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That came up. That's, oh, man, that's, that's a lot of work. But, well, the thing is, some of them were a little annoyed because the Florence. Mm -hmm. calendar came out mm -hmm. and it was more political we chosen pictures mm -hmm. than the ones that we did that were much nicer yeah, yeah, so I said well you know we'll you do work a something. senior center calendar fundraiser yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, good. that's a lot of work yeah. it's a tremendous amount. but the, the the photography the group we have are just excellent and I mean we got Bill, who's an artist, you know Bill, that comes in all the time, he's what, 81, I think, 82? Mm -hmm. He fell in the stream taking a picture the other day. Oh, he was, he oh, was so yeah. into it, he uh, got his camera all wet, oh, he came into class God. saying, well, I really had a good time, but I got a little wet. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. It's all wet, it's all wet, and blue and everything. Oh, oh, so, God. they're all motivated to take great shots, and I really have to, but by the, by the end of the day, I have to kind of slow them down because they've all taken 25 or 30 shots that they are so proud of. Mm -hmm. And every shot that they show me is like National Geographic quality stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, they they are so good. It's It's so enjoyable when, when I get really ticked tickled to death when somebody comes in and says first place, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, I sort of yeah. help take the picture in my mind, yeah. you know, taught them how to do it, how to take it, how to get that wild shot. Oh, your mentor. So, yeah. I could be uh, on the phone. Great. Yeah. They deserve it. Thank you. Anyone else from the new business? Okay, you see the February 12th is the next okay. meeting. Okay. I'm sorry, Ed, speaking of February. Um, on February uh, 13th, we're having a Valentine pancake breakfast. We've done it in the past, but this year we're hoping to get a lot more people and we're going to use it in the great room. We're going to have entertainment as well. It'll be a nice event, 8.30 to 10. So that'll be a Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it's a good Friday the 13th. Put a heart around that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. right. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn now. The first step we make the matter. It was a duo. Maureen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter.